Very good morning, and uh, it's just 24 hours to D-Day, <laughs> and uh, the campaigns and everything ran it off 12 midnight yesterday. So what you have today is uh, the inflow of security men into Benin City. We saw the show of force yesterday by the military and the other security agencies, but predominantly in August 2020, Yaga Africa brought out a report, a pre-election report, and that report was titled An Election Defined by Strong Armed Tactics and Violence. So not to tarry well, I have a representative of Yaga Africa, Cynthia Mbamalu here, and in your pre-election assessment, what are those areas that you know that might be a stumbling block for this election? Um, yeah, thank you and good morning. Um, I, I think these elections, like you, you, you said, it's, it's, been, um, it's been quite competitive and contentious, and we expect that to also play out um, tomorrow um, on, the, on Elections Day. But part of the things we had highlighted and in our pre-election statement was the fact that we had, ex we had observed a consistent trend of pre-elections violence, that election and, ele and violence that was connected to election-related activities in several local governments um, in the state. And we actually identified about 13 local government areas. 13, 13 out of 18. Out of 18, which um, is actually more than two thirds because two thirds is actually 12 of mm. this, um, of, of 18. And um, that had incidents of violence. Now, this included incidents like vandalism and destruction of properties, um, attacks, both physical and verbal attacks on individuals, even um, um, arms, that's um, small arms and light weapons. Profession of arms. Be, yes, yes, they were stockpiling and some people already collecting and even just showing what they had. So like exhibition of your your power sort of. And then there were there were also incidents of um, inciting statements that could incite violence, you know, made by political leaders or people that were influential in those communities. So what we were, what we had seen was from our pre-elections observation, there were only about five LGAs that we did not five. really have like consistent reports. So we, we look at the consistency in the reports of um, violence within those local governments and then also um, see how, how, um, how frequent they did happen and within which parties um, activities there were clashes of parties at campaign rallies which were also um, part of the things we used as indicators of violence. Okay, so, let's, let's go into some statistics now. Yeah. Now, for the number of registered voters that we have in Edo states is 2,210,000. Mm -hmm. And then um, the number of people that collected PVC, those are the eligible people that were able vote. to vote, yes. is 1.7 million, million and yeah. according to uh, uh, your report. Yeah. And on collected PVC is 483,000. Now, the Central Senatorial District gives account for 364,000 plus. Mm. The Northern Senatorial Districts, people there, the number of people that collected their PVC, 84%, mm -hmm. that's 564,000. Yeah. Now the battleground will now be the Southern Senatorial District, which will have 1.2 million people. Yes. That we actually, so you can see the concentration now, the yes. stakes will be high I, yes. in the Southern Senatorial south. District. Yes. What are those areas that you looked at in the Southern Senatorial District that you've done a kind of threat assessment? Yeah, so in fact, for the South, the only LGAs that we did not have incidents of violence were Ihuonde and, um, and Ovia Southwest. Now, others, LGAs like Oredo, because you know Oredo, Oredo is Ego, the biggest. Yes, yes, and Ego, they have consistently, in fact, in 2016, they also were amongst the LGAs that produced a larger uh, percentage of valid votes cast. Mm. So you see that those LGAs that um, historically have the highest number of registered voters, mm. PVCs collected, and mm. consistently have produced the highest number of um, valid votes cast, mm. also became um, very competitive, and that's what you like. That's what we call them the battleground states. So you uh, LGAs rather. So you have already you have ego. You have um, you have um, LGAs like Akoko Edo Kuboka. You have mm. LGAs like Esako West. Esako. Yes. So. You, it's, so it's spread between the south and the north because hmm. that's where the numbers are. Hmm. And, and, and if you... 1.1 million, yes, 500,000. Yes, yes. So, so what, what they need to the do truth? is to spread because you hmm. need to have at least 25% of the total vote cast. Right. 
fast. into a third of the LGEs. Hmm. So usually the target for political parties, where do we get the numbers first and hmm. then where do we get the spread? Hmm. So in some local governments in Central, for instance, their target to just be, let's just get one quarter of the votes cast yeah. here. Here we That's need for spread. But for majority votes, vote yes. For. Yes, so for majority votes, we can then go to the south and the north. Because, you know, these are battleground senatorial districts because they have... LGAs that have large number of voters registered that have collected their PVC. So both um, the different parties that want to um, win the elections mm. would first target the numbers from mm. this um, the, LGAs. The deployment of military security, the security 31,000 were told, other um, assisting agencies, this might lead to maybe 40,000 security. Plus, and yeah. when you want to look at it before now, on the demography that we've had, the statistic of the number of um, turnouts mm. of uh, 2019, before 2019, 19, yeah. what we've had, let's see the progression. How has this deployment of security affected the turnout? Um, well, so they saw that the security deployment could have two effects. One, it can inspire confidence for voters to turn out to vote. The other, it can deter participation or, re or limit participation in the sense that people would feel intimidated by the presence of security. And I think it's actually worrisome that in Nigeria, elections are like war zones because mm. you, if you're not a Nigerian and you're coming into Edo, for instance, yesterday and you mm. saw the ammo and all the vehicles yes. coming in, you so, know, so. You'd, be, you'd be wondering what is happening here? Is there crisis here? Mm. So I think at, w at some point we need to also get to create a balance mm. with um, deployment that inspires confidence mm. and not deployment that just, would mm. limit participation. In 2019, what do we, the turnout? The, the, the turnout for Edo in 2019 was poor because they had 28% turnout. 28%? Yeah, presidential, presidential election. Presidential elections. Mm. The House of Assembly elections um, had 32% turnout. So you see Edo is one of the states that has had limited or low or declining turnout of voters because if you go to 2016 elections, they were about 32% um, turnout of voters. But in 2018, it was 2011, um, it was 38% um, turnout. So you see from so 20... It's declining. It's declining, yes. So 2016, 32, now 20... Um, 2019 presidential, you think there will be high turnout because it's presidential elections, mm. is a lot more awareness. Mm. Everyone actually is taking part in that. But what we had was 28% um, was turnout. Um, so, we are, so there's a possible projection that we could even possibly see um, between, between 20 to 20, 28 to maybe 35% turnout. If you are not expecting 50%. Well, it would be it would be a miracle, and I would want that um, because the more voters come out to vote, the lesser the opportunity to manipulate. At the end of the day, elections are decided by those who turn out to vote. Mm. But if, for instance, in a polling unit of 500 registered voters, mm. only 200 turn out, what happens is that political parties can easily manipulate the mm. 300 um, mm. that did not come out the numbers. So, if we have more people coming out, it would also make it less um, possible. For parties to manipulate that, so I really mm. hope Edo people would come oh, out yeah. this time because this 50 percent mm. would be a good. A Let's miracle. keep in mind that even miracle national elections, so Nigeria has not gotten 50 percent <laughs> in a long while. <laughs> Since <laughs> Bamalu from Yaga, Africa, there and uh, Mike, uh, we're counting down to the September 19 governorship election here in Edo State. Over to you, Mike and Veronica. Thank you Thank very you, much, Ayo. Uh, it's just less than 24 hours now, and everyone's looking forward to how things are going to turn out. But the point there is the, the, the declining trend mm. in the turnout of voters is quite troubling, I must say. Absolutely. All right. Thank, Thank you very you much, Ayo. Ayo. We were speaking with uh, one of election observer earlier on, and some of the concerns were that the, the, the voter turnout has been low. Well, however, optimism with the 31,000 uh, uh, police, uh, police officers deployed to Edo State, I wonder if that is going to change. Yes, uh, since I said so uh, earlier, and we are looking at maybe this will not have a negative. Is that, she said we have two ways to eat. Is that it has a negative or a positive 
impact on tomorrow's exercise. But at the end of the day, the turnout will actually determine maybe the impact is negative or positive. But going by the figures we have for 2019, that's 28% according to Cynthia, that's, uh, that's all time low. So we expect, we expect it to improve for 2020 with the level of awareness and everything. Talking about awareness, the Independent National Electoral Commission, you know, they are, it's going to be their game tomorrow. They said they have 14 items on their table to be carried out. With the end of the campaigns yesterday, that means 13 of it had to be carried out. And we're expecting the election proper now for tomorrow. Cynthia, talking about INEC, what's going to be the difference between what they did in Kogi and what they are doing now? Um, well, I think provided there is, we don't have interference by the security and the security acts according to its mandate. Um, I, I, I think the Electoral Commission has put a lot of effort in this, in, this, um, in this election. And why is that? Because they have an impression to correct. Um, from, 20, from the 2019 gov um, governorship election in Kogi and Bayelsa, and there's, there was a, lead, it was a lot of challenges, and that led to trust deficits within mm, citizens. Deficit. So if you look at um, our pre-election survey that we had done, um, you'd see that there were still citizens who had expressed worry. That they don't have confidence they, they did not in not have the confidence in the, in, in, in the umpire. I think about 49%. 49%? Yeah, only 49% expressed some level of confidence mm. in the umpire. But that was earlier um, some months ago we we're hoping that by now the electoral commission would be doing a lot to improve on that now this election is very important because edo is very strategic in the sense that the conduct of this election if it is successful it becomes a positive mark for and for and for for the electoral commission and that would also improve perception of the commission and build confidence before ondo that's coming up in some weeks time so what we're looking out for what do we want to see different this time around where we want, we want to ensure that the electoral commission has we want to believe they've trained their officials but that in the application of guidelines there is consistency and uniformity across polling units across local government areas that when it also comes to administration that um, by tomorrow we want to see early commencement of polls. Now why is this important? Because the more you record low um, poor commencement or late commencement of mm. polls, you also create an impression that the commission was not ready for mm. the elections. But um, as at yesterday we had observed the deployment of materials from the CBN. As and usual. The, as usual. So it, it is gone to the LGA. Today they'll be moving to the racks and, and we Rack want is what, no? the, the registration area centers. That's okay. where um, it would move there before the movement to polling units tomorrow morning. Okay. So if all of this plays out well, we would also observe the process today to the racks. And we're hoping that by tomorrow morning, there will be early deployment. Polls are supposed to commence by 8.30, but we expect officials to be there before 8.30 to set up and get ready for the polls. But so by 8.30, 8 the election is supposed to commence. Mm -hmm. And if we, we want one of the things we are hoping to, uh, to observe tomorrow, and we're hoping to see tomorrow, is that by 8.30, at least It's a double task now. This is the first election we'll be conducting under COVID-19. COVID, yes. So how do we now marry the you know, observing COVID-19 protocol and the actual conduct of the election? Well, if we follow what is in the manual, the training manual, and just the guidelines, things should work out. The only, my only worry is that the process may take longer because mm. of the rules for physical distancing and the disinfecting that will be going on at the point of accreditation. So what INEC has said, based on the guidelines for this election, that there machine will, be two, will be disinfected. Yes, there will be two tier queue for one. So there will be mm. the outer queue and the inner queue. Mm. Now voters join the outer queue, physical distance will be maintained, and then people are brought in manageable numbers to the inner queue to vote. Everyone must have a face covering or a face mask. How about to be the allowed infrared? To um, yes, there would also be the infrared to check temperature. And they had okay. said if your temperature is 37 and above mm -hmm. and you have exhibiting some signs, you'll be quietly asked to move aside and um, form for others to continue the process. Now, at the point of accreditation with the smart card reader, there is a requirement that your fingers will be disinfected and also the scanner. On the smart card, oh, that being for everybody, for your everybody. fingers will be disinfected. Yes. yes. Ah, to make it. Uh, so that's why I say that the, the time the for processing, yes, for processing each voter 
would also um, may be a bit um, long, but the mm. voting is from 8.30 to 2.30, and um, 2.30 or rather until the last person on the queue votes. So whoever is on the queue by 2.30 will be allowed to vote. So if we commence early, it also makes the process um, faster because the delay, when you delay the process, you also delay counting and then you push coalition into later um, hours of the day. How about coalition from the world to local government and everything? A lot of people, they've exhibited, um, ex they've talked about fears, about um, uh, interference within this process. Yeah. Um, is there any way to monitor and police this yeah, result? Yeah, um, th there is. Um, usually the coalition is actually the weakest link in our electoral process. And um, INEC had said this time around, they introduced the zipper, that's the tablet. It was tested in Nasarawa. Yes, and by election. Yeah, in the by elections in Nasarawa. And they would use the tablet to take a picture of the form EC8A, which is a result form at the polling unit level. Units. And it would be sent to the results, um, results viewing portal. And citizens can follow that process. So that is one introduction that would open, create or enable transparency in the electoral process. And I think everyone should go on is um, inecelectionsresults.com. You can create online. an account online. You can create an account and you would follow the results once it's uploaded. Now, what we are hoping to see that one, the poll presiding officials at the polling unit would follow the rules, which requires you to send, use your tab, tablet to send this from EC8A to, um, to, the, to the platform, people can view that, but also in the coalition process, like you mentioned, from the world and uh, from the polling unit to the world, Lord. to the LGU, to the states. Now, what we're expecting is that the same form EC8A that it's signed, because it's supposed to be signed, dated and stamped at the level of the polling unit, that we mm. want to say that every form EC8A is properly signed, stamped and dated. Also, parties are supposed to countersign mm. on the result form mm. before it is moved. So one of the things we are looking out for is that that process is clear and transparent and that there's adherence to the guidelines. In addition, the result is supposed to be posted at the polling unit mm. from EC60 if we're able to view. We want the presiding officers to ensure they do that. That is how you promote transparency. And that the forms that leave polling unit should be the same that would get to what coalition level. Mm. We've seen instances where people are at the point at... Doctors. Yes, it's doctors that and it's altered and then there's also lack sometimes they don't allow the allow even observers or media come in for the coalition we want when that this for this election we want to see ultra. transparency or true hmm. and so that observers <laughs> are granted access and media <laughs> to the process of coalition quite informative we could go on and on and on mm -hmm. thank yes. you Cynthia thank you. For, from Yaga Africa and we're counting down to that election I'm sure we're going to have Cynthia and our team they're going to be on the field and they're all over they have 500 people agents across the 18 local government and in our situation room we are going to have people from Yaga Africa to give us updates and they're going to have pre-election assessment tomorrow mm -hmm. and we hope to be there to take it live mike yeah exactly Absolutely.